Let's start beginning of the beginning. Old Testament. These Christian missionaries, especially Jews, they are boasting about that Old Testament, especially the first five books, Pentateuch. Those books were written by Moses, peace be upon him. Musa alayhi salam. And they call it Torah, meaning the laws, Sharia. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These are the five associated chapters or books. They say that these are from Moses. Either conveniently or not. But this is what they assume. So let's try to dissect. 800 times we find in the Bible, in the five books, the first five books, the expression and God spake to Moses and Moses spake to God. You see, you can see it's a third person writing. God spake to Moses and Moses spake unto God. Now ask these Christian missionaries, if Moses wrote this, how could he say that and God spake to Moses and Moses spake to God? You see this? So this is proof enough. One part, one speech, it is there, it's not supposed to be there. Then your document is dubious. It means that you are assuming these things. And you know what? This is what I am talking to you. This is the critics of Bible already proved it. The doctors, the PhDs of literature who do all these masters, they proved it already that these documents are not signed by Moses. But what this is what I am giving you a layman explanation from the text. Because those books, uh, the critical books which write like critics, those books are very highly academic. So you need a high vocab, a background understanding of the history of Christianity to comprehend, to apprehend those messages. I'm giving you like a layman on a platter. Reason, like just quote the verse and do the job. So if Moses wrote those things, Moses would have said, and I spake to God and God spake to me. If God Almighty was dictating those phrases, then God would say that I spake to Moses and Moses spake to me. So this we find 800 times. God spake to Moses and Moses spake unto God. God spake to Moses. Who is writing this? Christian missionaries, please tell me who is writing this. I need the name of that person. You laugh on Quran, you don't even have a ground to stand upon. What happened to you? What is happening to you? Why have you started this bogus apologetics, making fun out of yourself, monkey out of yourself? Those Christian missionaries, like in 80s, 70s, they were good people. They were not like you. You today, Christian, with all this haughtiness, all this like bombastic attitude and totally vague arguments. What's happening to you? What is happening with you, with your whole Holy Spirit? This is what's happening because you know that, that these are, there is no answer to supply to these kind of questions. So you turn the tables, ignoring your own, as Jesus said, Swallow the whole camel, you swallow Trinity, you swallow all these propensities of Bible. Yes, but stare at the gnat. Now you worry about little, little things. Oh, Quran says this, Quran says, you don't need to worry about Quran. You need to deal yourself first because you came before us. Six, still 800 times we find this expression. Then the last book of Deuteronomy. Sorry, last book of this. Uh, Torah, they call it, supposed to be. Deuteronomy, they said this is written by Moses. We have a concrete evidence that Moses didn't dictate those words. So if we read book of Deuteronomy, you see over there, the last chapter, chapter 34, Moses supposed to be writing his own obituary, his own death. Can you believe it? And Christian never see that. I am asking who wrote those words. Who? Tell us the name. Tell us the biography of that person. In Islam, in Islamic eschatology, we have every tiny detail. One hadith, we have Asma'ul Rijal, the ilm of the chains of narrators, their biographies, vice versa. Over here, you have the word of God with anonymous pens, anonymous people. No biographies. How come? And you swallow it. And you say that this is the word of God. So Moses, did he write or no? No. 
Why? Because verse uh, chapter 34 of Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Torah, which they allege that Moses is the author, alleged author, it says that, and Moses was 120 years old when he died and his natural powers were not abated and no one has known his sepulcher up to this day. Who is writing this? Moses? Moses is writing that, that I'm going to die and nobody knows where the place will be and my natural power, my natural powers will not be abated on my death. You see somebody else is writing. Who? We would like to know. Muslims would like to know that who was dictating those statements. You said it's Moses. So the clever Christian will come and says these could be Joshua's. Could be. In the religion, you have goods. <laughs> In the religion of God, you want to make good. Could be, would be, should be. In religion, the knowledge must be concrete. If your rock foundation is trembling, you have no right to tell to others that what they should do or what not. When your own grounds are shaking. But this is not one thing. There are thousand things. I can put you whole day and night describing all those anomalies in the Bible. You see, when you debate to Christians on these merits of plain reading of the scriptures, plain reading, does it make sense or not? You people say, the Christian missionaries, if the plain reading of the text make common sense, seek no other sense. I am reading the plain reading, these, these scriptures, these texts. Over there, you said, tell, tell us first that Moses is the author or was the author and now you're contradicting your own self. That is why I say Christians are the host of cognitive dissonance, confusion. The real problem, nobody is likely to solve it, to solving it. What you have all sidetracks, this and that, this and that. Tell us simple words, who was the author? Do you know it or no? If you do not know it, then how would you say that or certify that these are the words of God? Who told you? Who? We, in our case in Islam, our Nabi, our Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him of Arabia, he told us everything, why this verse was revealed, to whom and what uh, like situation these verses were revealed. We call it Shani Nazul. The virtue, the purpose of revealing those verses, in which era, which date, Every tiny document is recorded and coming from unsay, unbroken sequence, chains of narration coming for 1400 years. And the most, the most miraculous stuff is it was preserved or it is still preserved in the hearts of people. Not on the documents, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, I'm leaving you with the book which cannot be eradicated through water. You cannot wipe this book through water. That is how good our Kalam, our book is. Why? Because it's the last and the final testament. No prophet is coming after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That is all. And Prophet said, there is no, no prophet between me and Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam. Jesus, peace be upon him. There is no prophet in between me and him. And Prophet said, I am the last. He is the seals of the prophet. Nobody, no, not in a tiny fraction of any possibilities or probability the prophet is coming. Remember that till Yomul Qiyamah till doomsday, day of judgment. So this is the point here. Now coming to the other stuff. You see the first five books of Moses they attribute to Moses are dubious. One verse one document is not supposed to be there and it is there and need clarification, this is not the word of God. I challenge to anyone, find a single contradiction in Quran. 23 years of prophetic life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, find one contradiction, not contradistinction. 
one contradiction when the time and place are the same and two different uh, things are to be found. This is contradiction, ikhtalaf in Arabic. If you do not know, then learn what is a contradiction in, in Arabic language, ikhtalaf. If zaman and makan, if time and place are same and two different things are to be found, that is contradiction. Contradistinction is the quality of ingredients. You keep putting more and more, it doesn't matter. Find one single, you will never be able to find it. Never. This is not the topic of contradiction in the Bible, but what I'm trying to open is an eye opener. Let's see five books you attributed to Moses. 800 times you find expression. I already discussed that. And the end, the chapter 34 of the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth book, you have this severe thing where Moses is telling, sorry, some third person is writing the obituary of Moses and nobody knows his sepulchre up to this day. Who is writing those words? I want from you Christian missionaries to tell me the name or a Wikipedia source, whatever. Who wrote that? Please. Then you have the middle books. All those books. Kings, Book of Kings, Books of First Kings, Second Kings, Authors, Unknown. Book of Job, Unknown. Not my words, here. I would like to share the sightings. As you know that our Western brothers and sisters go for sightings more than verbal explanation. Here, Book of Joshua. Author, major part credited to Joshua. Major part still, don't know. Book of Judges, author, possibly Samuel, possibly. Possibly, why? Why possibly? Ruth, author, not definitely known, perhaps Samuel. First Samuel, author, unknown. So first Samuel, author is unknown, but Ruth is supposed to be written by Samuel. Can you believe it? And they say, this is the word of God. They are sharing paradise with you with all these things. They are sharing paradise with you. First Kings, author unknown. Second Kings, author unknown. First Chronicles, author unknown. Probably collected with and edited by Ezra. Edited. Book, Book of Gods are getting edited. Second Chronicles, author likely collected and edited by Ezra. Esther, author unknown. Job, author unknown. Book of Psalms, they, they allege to uh, Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam. And David somehow. Book of Psalms, author, principally David, through there are other writers. Still, no concrete foundation. I'm telling you, no rock foundation in Christianity. And even in the books, Ecclesiastes, author, doubtful, but commonly assigned to Solomon. <laughs> Isaiah, minor prophets, the prince of prophets. Isaiah, Author mainly credited to Isaiah. Parts may be been written by others. Who wrote it? We would like to know the names. Who wrote it? You worry about harsh version, worsh version, and all the version of Quran. Tell us who wrote these things. Who? Book of Jonah. Author unknown. Habakkuk. Author nothing known of the place or time of the birth. Can you believe it? Not a speck or a doodle you know about the book of Habakkuk, but it is the word of God. What is the source of all this? This encyclopedia or dictionary Collins, Revised Standard Version, 1971, pages 12 to 17. Who wrote it? Nobody knows. This is how good your documents of Old Testament are. Let's move to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew have total 28 chapters. Mark have total, I think, 16. Luke has total 24. And John has total 21. All these four chapters in four Gospels, I will tell you one by one that all these four Gospels, the authors are not the same. You see, the critics of Christianity, they are telling you now, especially the scholars, but they don't like to share with the general people like general uh, technical people, because they're not the part of their curriculum. But they know, and they tell the people plainly and clearly. You see, all those four Gospels, none of them are being signed, are being signed by those particular writers. Do you know that? 
None of them are being endorsed. Those are dubious anonymous books. And conveniently, the churches or whosoever were the, in, the, in the committee in charge, they said that we think that this might could have been written down by Matthew. So they say gospel according to Matthew. Might Luke, this, whatever you find it, has been written, written down by this particular person, Luke. All Matthew, Mark, Luke, this Deuterocanonical Gospel and John added later. All these four Gospels, they do not pend. They do not have any endorsement by these particular names. And can you believe it? Can you believe it? You have a book, Matthew? Who's Matthew? What is his surname? What is his last name? Who was he? And you said these are Gospels. Basically, these were all the circulatory news. All the circulation were there and viral there and they took it they write that somebody said okay i saw jesus by doing this somebody said about jesus and they wrote it and they put in the documents and then they sealed and they make it by the church that these are the canonized gospels god almighty is not telling them show me which where single place that jesus says that follow matthew's gospel matthew is right he wrote right accounts of mine never the oldest oldest book were written by paul and later on the gospel maybe the mark is the oldest and all these were written way after Jesus Christ's ascension. So who knows who's writing who? From where you're copying from who? All are these things are dubious. Now this is what according to the scholars. If you try to dissect within their own self-evidence, like uh, sorry, uh, evidence inside the Bible, you would like to see even a child can tell you that these pronouns what, the, what types of pronouns are those? Subjective or objective? Anyone can tell you. Third person or second person? Plural or singular pronouns? You see, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they say that these are the Gospels and Book of Acts attributed to Luke. These are the actions of apostles. And then all the letters by St. Paul coming later. 27 books he wrote it in, on his, from his letters point of view. But can you believe you are telling us? You, the, the reason why I'm telling you this because Christians, they're worrying about Quran. How, how, how do you worry about Quran when you are, you are in gutter? You know, gutter is mire. You are in gutter and you're telling us and, and you are our, holding our hands to pull us out. You yourself are in gutter. You know that? In a court of law, you will be charged for like, like something plagiarism because there is a plagiarism in the bible and fall with false witnesses perjury you will be charged because you don't have any right witness in the court of law and you will be debunked you know that the way your documents are matthew who is matthew who is matthew look at our our islamic scholarly every sahaba what they mentioned taking the hadith his whole name is mentioned his whole biography is mentioned and his whole biography his friends are mentioned and you have matthew who is matthew you don't know just Matthew start writing it and you start swelling it. This is what Quran did to you. The dent has been made on you. The dent has been made on Christianity. Remember that. And you cannot come out from there. Matthew 9 9. They say Matthew wrote Matthew. Read Matthew 9 9. Over there it's written. And Jesus saw a text collector by the name of Matthew. And he went to him and said, Matthew, stand up. Then Matthew stood up and he said, Matthew, follow me. And he followed him or Matthew followed him. Who wrote this, Matthew? Third person is writing this. The event between Matthew and Jesus. If Matthew had written it down, Matthew would say, and I saw Jesus and he was looking for me, he came to me and he said, Matthew, stand up. I stood up and followed me. So I followed him. But Jesus was dictating. Jesus said, I, I saw Matthew a tax collector and I went to him and I said Matthew stand up and he stood up and I said Matthew follow me and Matthew followed me simple basic English third person is writing I would like to know who is this person answer my question please answer my question who was this person even for one second even for one verse you have it which is not supposed to be there who was he and I would like to do the same thing which I'm doing to you put on Quran. You will fail. You will never be able to prove it. Not a single contradiction and confusion is to be found in the Quran. Subhanallah. Not a single. Coming to Mark. What I want to say about Mark. 
Revised Standard Version 1952, they remove whole chunk of the chapter. Mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20, they removed it and they say this one, interpolation, adulteration, concoction into the text. And for the most ancient manuscripts, these old verses were not there. Mark is also a dubious book. Who wrote it, the author? Mark, they said no, Mark is not the author. They changed this review, they review this all. They revised this already. Mark is not the author. He's not the sole author. Coming to Luke. Luke chapter 24 verse 51 that the verse of ascension has been taken out. They said this was not to be found in the old manuscripts, ancient manuscripts, revised standard version. And Luke himself is saying that this thing I'm writing and I'm dedicating to Theophilus, my friend, because I'm the learned man. I'm Paul's physician. Luke chapter 1 I'm reading. Big name. He said that I'm taking the accounts of Jesus and I'm going to put this in an orderly manner, in a, in a better way, and then I will convey my message. So, and I'm dedicating this all thing to my friend Theophilus. He's not dedicating to you people, you Pakistani Christians, and you all Christians in the world, especially those with anglo saxons of Germans, all these Western people, all these Roman Catholics. He's saying, I'm giving to my friend Theophilus. And you said that Luke was inspired to... To, uh, from Holy Spirit and giving us these all things? Oh, come, lies after lies. He himself saying that God is not telling me to do. I am a learned man. I am just by making a better version and dedicating to my friend Theophilus. Luke chapter 1, read it. 2451 taken out as an ascension. One word is there, it's not supposed to be there, it's dubious. Coming to John. You see, Gospel of John was in disputation because the way we find it, like the like the verse of uh, this philosopher, Alexander of Philo, Philo of Alexandria. He, the, the one about the Logos and all that stuff. Look, Bible is full of Eastern book. It is the Hebrew book. It is Aramaic book. What it has to do with Logos, Ethos and Pathos. These are all Greek philosophies. It doesn't make sense. We find this in literary devices. In English subject, when we teach about English literature, we have these devices, sound devices. And from devices, we have all these technical words, ethos, pathos, and logos. What it has to do with it, with the Eastern language? So, this word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is a copy, plagiarized according to the, the, the new the research. It was plagiarized by the philosopher, uh, this philo of Alexandria. And they copied from him and put into John's book. It is not there. It's supposed to be there. And second, the last chapter of John, chapter 21, over there it says, and this is uh, a very pious person. John, somebody's talking about John, who has written the account of Jesus. And he was a very pious person. Who wrote this word? Who? You said, oh, no, no, it is the end. I know it is at the end, but you said this is according to John. So who wrote this text? I want to know the name of that person. Then, coming to the letters. Letters of Paul is also dubious. First epistle of John, chapter 7, verse number 5. Chapter 5, verse number 7, sorry. First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 has been taken out as a fabrication in Rabbi Standard Version 1952. You know that? And they said that this is not supposed to be there. Some vestiges of Tapsis, where this was a footnote, came into the text later on. So who wrote that word? Who wrote that verse? First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 are the letters. Paul, New Testament. Then, last. All the New Testament were written in Greek. Coin Greek. And Jesus never spoke Greek. Paul never spoke. So I'm not talking about Paul. All other disciples of Jesus were Grecians. Or were Hebrews? Jews? No, but only Paul was half Roman and half Jew. But still it doesn't entitle him to speak Greek meticulously. I doubt. But let's for the, for the sake of our argument, let's see that Paul was a Greek expert. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. How did you get those Grecian Western language and the real language was Aramaic? How? Where is the Aramaic? Where is that original? Did, did Jesus spoke those words in Greek? Matthew spoke words in Greek. John spoke this word in Greek. John 1, 1 was in Greek. And 
this in archai in hologos proston theon kaitios in hologos this is greek did he speak greek john all those disciples were the do were the greek christian i don't want to i don't know i don't know then you're going to say i'm exaggerating i'm not exaggerating who wrote those words who translated who is the translator okay you're going to say that quran also has translators okay we do have but sir if the translator's name is not not mentioned we don't accept that and the translated version is not the word of god this is the close rendering for the understanding of the people we have abdullah yusuf ali we have darya badi we have shija sahi international translators are mentioned that this is translated by this department and if we have an english quran without arabic text it is not even the quran you will never see it says the holy quran it says the translation of the holy quran but you said holy bible with the translations how can translation be the true word of god when this was not revealed did did god almighty dictate this in english english is the west west german language adopted by these english people coming from north and they adopted this language and they they put this language in england it's not even the british language it's the west west german language and then the latin was there before that so these words greek and all this translation way came later so i am asking you what language did jesus speak what language did paul matthew if you want to put those people as authors how come a book come came about and it was written in a greek and the origins were the opposite language of east it does not make sense it's the same thing that prophet muhammad says and speaks arabic and the language he revealed the quran was in german how come how come tell me in the word of god and you are telling and sharing your paradise with us with all these weaknesses these external and internal evidence you can see clearly that bible is not the word of god as per se wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin